Hello friends, I wanna share with you some tips on changing the address on your ACR card. If you live in the Philippines like me and you have some special visa, I have a 13A marriage visa, and you have an ACR card, you may have learned or found out that you need to change or update the address on that card or there could be complications or even fines. And since I just came back from the Bureau of Immigration, I just changed the address on my card, uh, I wanna share with you some helpful tips to make the process much easier because I didn't know these things when I went and it was a hassle and a headache and I just wrote some tips down to share them with you to make it easier for you. So what you don't want to do, you don't want to go to the BOI only to be told that there are problems or with your paperwork or whatever and that you have to go back and forth to repeat the process, which is a real hassle. That's especially true if you live far away from the nearest BOI office, or even if, in your, even if you're in Manila and have to go to Intramuros, which I know nobody wants to do. So make the process as easy, easy as you can. Now, I don't know what type of ACR card you have, but I believe most of them, at least mine, it expires after five years. That's for a 13A. I don't know if it's the same for all cards. Eventually, your ACR card will expire, and you're gonna have to go to the BOI to get it renewed. And if you want to put a new address on your new ACR card, what you don't want to have happen is the Bureau of Immigration will ask you why you're putting a new address on the new card and you did not update the last one. Then you're going to be in trouble and you could get a fine and it'll be complicated complications and it can be really frustrating as you can probably imagine. I was reading a blog online a few days ago about a guy who also had a 13A and he moved he did not update his address and then four years later he went to the BOI and they asked him that why didn't you update when did you move he said I moved four years ago so they find him uh, I think it's 200 a month 200 pesos a month for the last four years which went up to be about 10,000 pesos so it can be a real hassle and unfortunately there's just not a lot of good information out there even on the immigration website on updating your address this stuff is not really helpful so I, I wanted to make a video so that People don't have to go through this hassle. So here are some helpful tips. Number one, do it as soon as possible. If you're gonna move, if you just moved, or you plan on moving, plan on going to the BOI within the first month. Don't waste time, don't put it off, don't say, hey, I'll do it later. Do it as soon as possible, especially if you can within the first month. I believe as of right now, every month that you don't do this, there's a 200 fine, uh, and you just don't wanna have to go through that. That adds up over time. Uh, and, and it's just, just a hassle, so do it as soon as possible. Number two, you need to get a certificate of residency from the new barangay. So if you lived in barangay 32 and you moved to barangay 71, you need to get a certificate of residence from the new barangay. That would be 71 if you just moved there. Now here's the problem. In many areas of the Philippines, many barangays, when you go to them and you ask them and you're talking to the barangay leader or their secretary or whatever, and you ask them for a certificate of residence, they think in, your, in their mind that you're asking for some sort of character reference, that you've been there for six months or a year, that you're not, a, a prob, you know, you're not causing problems, you don't owe money or whatever. They're thinking of some sort of character reference that you might need for a job or MBI application or police type clearance. That's what they're thinking. You're not asking for that. And you have to explain to the barangay people I'm not asking for a character reference. I'm asking for a piece of paper that simply certifies that I moved to this new barangay. I live in such and such a house at such and such an address. That's where I now live. That You have to explain that to them because they have a different concept of what you're asking for. And that's, if you read blogs online, some people have difficulty because many barangays will not give you the certificate of residence unless you've already been there at least six months. This creates a big problem because the BOI wants you to update the address now and they require you to, they require you to have the certificate of residence now, but you can't get that until six months later. You see the problem? The BOI is asking you to do something that you can't do because the barangay won't cooperate. So you have to explain to the barangay people, um, you're not asking for a character reference, but just a piece of paper that says you live on 
San Juan Donata Street at such and such a house or whatever. Also, you want to explain to the barangay people that the Bureau of Immigration is requiring this. It's their requirement, not just something that you're requesting and that you will be fined if you don't produce this piece of paper. Uh, also, you want to show your barangay, when you go to the barangay captain, I mean, it depends, every barangay is somewhat different. You want to give them evidence that this is where you live, like show them the recent receipt that you moved or some letter or something from if you're renting a house or you bought a house or whatever. Show the barangay captain, this is where I live. This is the address that you, that you have evidence that you live there. Now, when I was living in Manila in Pasay City, I, when I went to, because there's millions of people there, the barangay captain doesn't know everyone in the community. So especially a lot of the foreigners who live in the, in the apartment. So the barangay captain said he would not issue the certificate unless I went to the apartment building first and got a certificate from the apartment manager. So if you're in an apartment or some condo or whatever, you may want to get a letter. Go talk to the barangay captain first, of course, and ask their requirement. But you may want to go to the apartment. This happened twice in two different barangays. Go to the apartment complex or condo and get the condo manager. So get the condo manager to write a letter, take it to the barangay. The barangay will issue the certificate, then you can go to the BOI. It's also on the barangay certificate of residence, make sure that you have the date of your move, that what day did you move? If it was March 4, put March 4, that's the date that you moved. And the new address has to be exactly the same as the new address on your affidavit. For example, you have the barangay certificate and your affidavit, the date of transfer has to be exactly the same on both of them and your address has to be exactly the same. So if you moved to 213 Leverisa Street, apartment 6B, then the affidavit and certificate both have to be the exactly the same, 213 Leverisa Street, apartment B. Make sure that your name is spelled exactly the same on both the certificate and on the affidavit. Also make sure some barangays use, they'll just get onto the computer and look up certificate of residence because maybe they've done this before, especially in some areas of Manila, and they'll just print out a boilerplate letter that they've done before. Make sure you read that because sometimes it's specific to Filipinos uh, as compared to foreigners like myself. For example, at one barangay printed one out and it said, uh, Andrew is a Filipino citizen. And when I went to the Bureau of Immigration, they said, you're not Filipino, you need to go back and have your barangay print out a new one. So a very helpful tip before you go to the barangay and ask for a certificate of residence is to, if you're going to encounter any problems, print out an example certificate of residence that they need to publish. Because when you show up there and you ask for this and maybe they're confused or they're thinking of character reference or they have some other boilerplate letter, have a printed example of what they need to put on the paper so that they don't have to think. You don't want them having to think or ask questions or telling you to go somewhere else. Just say, hey, this is what needs to be on there and I'll put in the comment section down below what I used and you can adapt that for your own situation. Another very important tip is that your notarized change of address has to have the same old address that's on your ACR card and the same new address that's on your barangay certificate. So you have your current ACR card. You're gonna change, update that address, that's your old address, to the new location. When you file your affidavit of change of address, the address that is on the affidavit as the old address has to be exactly the same that it was on your ACR card. And then, of course, the new address on the affidavit has to be the new exactly the same that it's on your barangay certificate. You want to make sure everything's consistent in all your documents. The BOI that I went to down here in Mindanao, for some reason, they, were, they really wanted to see that the date of transfer was the same on both the barangay certificate and the affidavit. So whatever date that you're going to use, if you moved September 6, make sure that September 6 is consistent on all your documents. You, you got to put yourself in the mind of the BOI people. They want to see all this consistency, all the I's dotted, T's crossed. If you've been to the BOI, you've probably had that experience before. The next tip is to save all your receipts. Save copies and receipts of all your interactions with the BOI, with the barangay, any receipts that you have from moving or rental or condo receipts, and just save everything and take copies of these to the BOI because some folks at the BOI will ask for it and others will not. What you don't want to do, which 
I've had experience is show up there and some person says, hey, by the way, do you have this document? And you don't have that. So when you go to the BOI, just bring copies of everything, bring copies of your passport, copies of your ACR card, bring the copy of your visa authorization. For example, I have a 13A marriage visa and I got a special document from the BOI that had like 10 signatures on there. I forgot the name of the document. Just bring copies of all that stuff. Again, if you're far from the BOI and you travel all the way to go there, you don't want to show up there and they're ask they're going to ask for something that you didn't bring. So, make sure you just just bring everything, bring copies of everything that way you just avoid any hassle. And one last piece of helpful information, not all immigration offices will print out for you a new ACR card. Some of them don't have that equipment or whatever. That Those are usually in the big cities. The BOI uh, extension offices that are in smaller towns, they won't have that equipment. So you may not get a brand new ACR card, but that doesn't really matter. They will give you some paperwork signed and dated and all that stuff, official stuff from the Bureau of Immigration. Make sure you save that because when you go to get your renewal, if you're going to get a renewed card and you have to go to the big city to do that, you're going to want that paperwork to show them, I did update, I did change my address at such and such location. Here's the BOI official paperwork for that. So that avoid a lot of hassle. So that's about it for this video. Those are the tips that I wish I had known before I went because it was a real hassle and a headache going back and forth, traveling to the BOI, getting all these documents together and trying to explain all this to the Barangay folks who just didn't know what was going on. So these are some very helpful tips that would have helped me. I believe they'll be very helpful to you. In the comment section down below, please share your experience. You know, what type of ACR card do you have? Um, how did you update your address? What kind of fine did you have to pay? You know, what documents did they ask for? And share with us so we can all learn from each other. So yeah, that's it. So please leave your comments down below. I'll leave a comment down below of all the information that I included on my affidavit and all that other stuff. And um, that's it. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.